I need light. There is no light. Definitely needs light to be able to lift it. Oh, these conditions do seem to be getting worse. All I wish for is that I had light. Oh, look, there is light. Welcome to Diocon Mountain, an area so stunning. You get views all around Valencia Island and over as well onto the Ivory Peninsula. And in the distance, but you can't see it today, is the Dingle Peninsula. So I'm up at 300 meters now, and I'm going to hopefully get some nice views, although they are disappearing quite quickly. So I need to be very, very fast. Um, the forecast is for a bit of rain, not a lot of rain, but a bit of rain so yeah i have to be super careful uh, in relation to the gear don't know if i'm going to get much from a visibility point of view but yeah wait till i show you the views that we have from up here let's go so below me uh, down here is Valencia Lighthouse, uh, which is where we were for my last episode for sunrise. And over then into the distance is the edge of the Ivey Peninsula. And further out this way, but unfortunately you can't see it. If I come this way, I'll try and look at you. In the haze there is the Dingle Peninsula. On the other side over here, I have some really interesting clouds that are coming across. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get some any great shots. I need light, there is no light. It's completely flat, but nonetheless, I'm still gonna get some shots anyway. I'm going to use my long lens. Uh, I might actually go back to the van and get my uh, 150 to 600 as well and try and pick out some more details, but I don't know if it's gonna make much of a difference because I don't have any light, but I need light anyway to be able to lift this scene. But nonetheless, I'll get the camera out, we'll set up and I'll talk to you then and see what I get. So I have my camera now set up and as predicted, the visibility is quite low. But nonetheless, I can see right down here onto Valencia Lighthouse and then I can see the islands that are lying off that as well. There's nice depth within the image, but it definitely needs light to be able to lift it. Now, from a settings point of view, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. I put the camera on the tripod just for ease of use, but I could actually shoot handheld. Um, so what I have here is I am at 200 mil. Let me think actually, uh, 150 mil. Um, and I'm framing it just that I can see the island that's just off here and then with Valencia Lighthouse it is at uh, f8 I'll put my ISO now back down to uh, 100 because I was up at 400 from earlier and from a speed point of view 1 60th of a second I am on manual focus and what that does in the USR is that everything lights up red so that I know then um, what I need to consider from a focus point of view but it's not that difficult to be honest because everything is going to be far off in the distance I want to be conscious in relation to the foreground that's here because I don't want the bits of grass that's there I don't think so anyway I might do because it might end up kind of balancing the image I'm not quite sure but yeah I'm going to take any of this first shot anyway here I'll give you a look at this now and then I'm going to look around and see what else I can spot like i said i need light but it's flat gray but i'll make the best of it it's not raining anyway like it was yesterday with the sideways rain so i'm sure i'll still be able to get a couple of nice shots in here at least so yeah here's the first ones and i'll check back in after that
Oh, it's kind of chilly up here. Uh, but on the gloves there now just to save the old digits. Um, I have, with the long lens, actually taken a couple of shots and the light is quite flat. It did look like it was going to lift slightly. Uh, so I got a shot during that. Might be a slight bit of less depth in the clouds, let's just say. Um, but what I've done actually now is I've put the camera onto um, a picture profile monochrome. So I'm thinking about black and white because there isn't much really in regards to color unless I get light. So by having it with monochrome, oh, that's better. Uh, having it monochrome on the back of that, it still shoots it in color. So when I bring it back, it's still going to be in color, but at least it gives me an idea of what the profile would actually look like if I was to have the image black and white. And I've framed up a couple of shots actually with the uh, island that's just off from the lighthouse. Got the lighthouse in most of the shots and then I also did one just on the kind of, there's a, like an S curve running through the edge of the island actually here. Can I show you on this? Uh, it's around here I think it is. Maybe I'm pointing, I can't see from where you are, but um, yeah, you'll see it when you see the shot. But um, that's kind of an S curve leading off into the distance, but the visibility is quite poor, to be honest with you. Um, I've come up here and I said, okay, I'm going to shoot because I'm up here anyway. I'll wait around, I'm in no major rush. Maybe the light will change. The forecast is to get worse, but at least it's not raining. Um, but I'll wait and see will I get um, any bit of luck anyway on that. What I am going to do though is I'm going to go back to the van. I'm going to get my 150 to 600. I'm going to take that out and then see if I can go in further and uh, see what kind of shots I can get from that. But yeah, I'll show you the ones that I've taken here, a mixture between 70, 115, 150, 200 mil. Um, and yeah, I'll check back in once I get the long lens. conditions do seem to be getting worse and still cold actually after putting on the gloves so I'm glad that I put them on after I started to feel the chill but yeah as you can see here now I have my long lens on so that's my Sigma 150 to 600 and it's something I always have with me in the van and what it's allowed me to do actually is pick out some very interesting things in the bigger scene so on the island that's just off here um, there's a cluster of trees so by zooming into those, I can basically pick those out with just water behind it. So it's kind of a juxtaposition kind of thing. And then to the left of that as well, then you've got an old lookout tower. So again, the same thing, just to zoom into that and then just having the water behind it. So it looks like it's an island way off on the coast, let's just say. Um, below me as well, here, and I only spotted it actually by using the long lens. So there's an old Celtic cross that's right at the very end of this um, peninsula. I've never seen it before and I've been here a number of times but by zooming into the uh, the 600 mil again I can separate that out I'm using an old wall as well as the leading line that's bringing you up to the Celtic Cross and I've got to get some details as well in relation to it all I wish for is that I had light I've been here a number of times and every time I've come here actually I've had poor conditions probably because of the height but it's only 300 meters so it shouldn't be that way but um, I'm going to take these shots anyway here now. I'm going to wait around. I'm going to see if I do get any luck in relation to it. The cloud is moving. It's quite windy uh, here right now as well. So the cloud is moving. Um, so hopefully it will move away and it will peck off, as we say in Ireland, uh, to allow me to be able to have some um, light in it at least come onto the scene, to kind of lift it, because it is quite flat at the moment. Since I've run the long lens actually as well as the 150 and 600, I've moved back into colour now again. Um, now that I know what black and white will look like, I can always convert these ways if I want to be black and white too. So yeah, here's these shots with the long lens and uh, yeah, the wind is picking up now. Um, so we'll check back in again in a moment.
So I'm switching you over here now to a bit of more handheld. The wind is quite strong and it actually knocked my uh, tripod over that this was on. Thankfully, it fell against me, so I didn't lose the Osmo Pocket 3. But yeah, what I've done now is I'm in at 600 mil actually here. And um, if I give you a look, uh, you'll be able to see it from there. I'll zoom into this and show you but, um, what that does in relation to the bigger scene. And I've now just singled out the lighthouse below me and there's still some beautiful waves that are crashing below that and what's happening with this wind now as well as it's blowing the tops off those waves so I think I'm getting some really nice shots as those waves are crashing in between me and the lighthouse and they're also crashing around the back of the lighthouse as well and um, at the moment here now it's still quite grey so I probably waited around about 40 minutes since I was last after checking in uh, and it hasn't changed if you look around me here it is exactly the same nonetheless it's still stunning here but like i said all i need is uh, the light well, to lift that but i don't know how many times i said that but obviously i need it but yeah i'll give you a look at these ones here now which is at 600 mil i think they'll be nice i think i got a couple of nice shots as well and a couple of nice ways that came in uh, during that and they're nice where they're breaking as well not only in front and then topping but also behind it as well so yeah here's the next one talk to you in a bit There's a gap in the clouds there, but all the way over here. Uh, so not allowing my light in, but I did uh, decide to put back on my, I'm uh, well not back on for the first time actually, my wide angle lens and go in at 35 mil and just see, could I get an image of the overall scene? But it does look quite small. So what I decided to do is, because this wind is moving so much, put on my um, 10 stop. And what that allows me to do is be able to capture that movement of the clouds that are streaking across. It also gives me some uh, motion blur as well in the water uh, below. But I do think, yeah, that if I got light, and again, you know, that's all I seem to, I should call this episode, if only I had light. Um, but if I got light, this whole scene would lift. And I was hopeful that that gap that was there might have some sun rays that would come through it and even lift something in the distance. Never mind, say, on the foreground for what I'm looking for. But nonetheless, it's still stunning. I'll give you a look at the... 35 mil uh, long exposure shot here, 30 seconds, F11, ISO 100, pretty straightforward. And yeah, let's see then what else happens after that. is light can you see it here behind me maybe you can maybe you can't yeah right here on the edge of that there's a bit of light and what i'm doing now at the moment here is i'm actually doing a time lapse so it's perfect timing actually for the time lapse because i'm about to see where that light has come from it's only there for a fleeting moment anyway i can't figure out because the clouds here are completely clagged in so i don't know where the light is actually coming from and I can't even see the sun or anything like that, but maybe there's a gap over there that's allowing it to come through, but I'm not going to complain anyway, because that whole headland over here uh, lit up, and also a small bit of the other headland as well lit up, albeit subtly, nothing but 
you know, not, not clear or direct light. So yeah, here's my um, impromptu time lapse now and we'll see where that light would have come from then. And uh, yeah, I'll check back in after that. I know I was saying the whole time all I needed was some light, but I got the light and I got some stunning light that was dancing all around the whole area here below me. I did a couple of different shots back on my uh, 7200, but back on my 150 to 600. I did some portrait shots in relation to below. I got some shots of the waves that are crashing. I did some time lapses, all pretty manic in a short period of time. And now the light is starting to fade again as you can possibly see here below me already, but it was incredible. I'm so happy now that I decided to come up here because when I was coming up, being honest with you, I was like, this could be 60, 40 against, but yeah, all it takes is a brief moment. And even with this wind, I stuck through it and I managed to get those shots. I hope you enjoyed coming along this episode to the stunning area here on the Geocon Mountain, looking down on Valencia Lighthouse and over then as well onto the Ivre Peninsula. Uh, I'm going to finish up this episode. Thank you very much as always for joining. If it's your first time on the channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Give me a like, give me a comment. And if you want to watch another episode, I recommend this video here. And until the next time, schlong the folks.